Thank you. I know there was a there was a session yesterday on artificial intelligence and radiology, and so um, in the pre-conference workshop. So those of you who are interested in the applications of AI in text, um, invite you to just ask questions. Listen, I want to show you a short demo of what we're doing as well uh, with the Earthshot engine. All right, thanks. So. This, the session, what we wanted to introduce over here in the Evidence-Based Medicine Conference, uh, and I just had a short talk at WCI as well, is about the application of a technology solution in decentralized cancer care. So there's a lot of discussion on evidence-based medicine going on in these conferences over here. And But then at the further and further away you move from the center of excellence, as you get more decentralized, it's harder and harder to take these discussions and get it applied locally. And we believe that in addition to training the trainers and upstaffing capabilities, there is a role for technology and for artificial intelligence to help in taking your expertise from, say, Mumbai, and then moving it further and further away into the periphery where most of cancer care is actually being solved, right? So Navia is an organization that is a clinical informatics and patient services organization. A lot of you might already know about us through our collaborative pilot with Tata Memorial Center and the National Cancer Grid since 2010. So in 2014, a lot of you became experts on the panel for Navia uh, and the with, uh, with TMH and the NCG, where asynchronous virtual reviews for complex cases were launched across the country. And most of the service has been very low income patient focused. So we see about 1000 to 1500 requests for uh, consults, evidence-based uh, check on the treatments per month, of which almost 90%, 85% to 90% of our patients are coming from resource-poor settings on a, uh, you know, Aishman Bharat scheme or an uh, Arogya Mitra, Bajpay, Biju Kalyani Yojana scheme across in the states. And why has this been a unique initiative of TMH and NCG? Because the data model is built for Indian patients and it's very research motivated. So we've been conference after conference validating and presenting. So what I want to talk about, I'm going to skip through for a second over here, is what are we doing and why is it what we're st starting this year different and show you a demo of the technology platform itself. So currently, the way that we're operating is we take patients' clinical data, the unstructured data, runs through our NLP engines, it gets structured, mapped to the treatment guidelines, and then you get structured clinical summaries or diagnostic reports outside. A lot of you have seen these in consultations, right? So... When Dr. Pramesh was presenting this data at ASCO in 2017 about the use of a technology service for virtual consults and how to increase the access to experts, uh, one of the things that, were, that came out was that we don't need a cancer moonshot. What we need is actually a cancer earth shot. We know what to do. And if we can actually do what we know what to do in the periphery, then this would be really useful. And so the thought of putting in a technology system to do this came about from there. And it actually matches what we want to do in a hub and spoke model. So in a hub and spoke model, we're moving away from a center of excellence model where everybody travels to you know, uh, a large hospital to get care in Delhi or Mumbai or Chennai or Velour or something like that. Instead, a decentralized model is one where there's a regional medical college, then there's a district hospital. And if the directions can go from the hub center or the apex center, then, in the, then it can be treated in the periphery with a lot of cost savings. So what... TMC Navia does is we do uh, we work with a three pronged approach for non complex cases where we know that all right it's stage three disease we need a, at least a chest X ray or we need a CT scan for staging we're able to answer it then and there in the spoke center and get it taken care of complex cases get routed through the virtual or asynchronous platform to the experts to review you, you you've seen DICOM imaging you've seen MRI PET CTs all of those come to you for reviews and then they respond back. Uh, to go back to the uh, patients. And then finally, there's also a case-based mentoring uh, uh, program on top of that. So what I want to show you right now is actually what we call the Earthshot engine. And this is essentially a, a system that's been developed to basically take what we are doing uh, through uh, our online platform and then basically move it into the hospital so that the treating oncologists can receive this uh, then and there, and then they are able to actually go ahead and uh, get the outcome of the guidelines. So I'm going to show you a, a case that we have processed at Andhra Medical College at King George Hospital in Vishakhapatnam. This was recently a ward patient that we looked at. And uh, it's just to take you through sort of an example of what uh, it looks like. 
So basic notes would come to the doctor in this way, as you've seen. The more and more you go into the periphery, there's no electronic medical system. It's handwritten notebooks. In fact, there are these sometimes it's these little Mickey Mouse notebooks that you get with all the investigations written in. It's not even necessarily a hospital notebook. And the radiology, all these findings are handwritten down, right? So what we do is basically take these reports, upload it into the system. There's a whole OCR process that can then help look through, extract this data. And then it can be verified by a analyst who is, um, you know, in the hospital. So right now in the five periphery hospitals in Andhra Pradesh we're working with, we have one analyst in each hospital who's basically looking at this data and providing the information to the oncologist before the oncologist sees the patient. So if I process through, this is a dynamic form. It's a form that changes as you go along. So it's the, it is a breast cancer patient, 70-year-old patient, which picks out, okay, she has stage four breast cancer. She's treatment naive. And if we start looking at immediately the checklist for stage four cancer starts popping up. Has she had a biopsy? Has she had ERPR confirmation? Has she had a bone scan or some type of CT scan for a metastatic workup? The next thing that the, and I'm going to show you how this changes when we go to a stage two patient, for example, the next, the way it's constructed is to follow the guidelines and to basically follow on those nodes of the guidelines. So the next question that it wants to ask is, what's the performance status of the patient? Doesn't really care about physical findings at this point, but the next thing it's going to in detail is where are the locations of the metastasis? So since the engine knows that it's a stage four patient, wants to know where are the metastasis on the basis of the NCG guidelines and the TMH guidelines, etc. So this lady had bone mets and she had, as you can see, there is a mention of, you know, stage four breast cancer, bone mets, lung mets with a visceral crisis written in and which is picked up. And then from there, what you do is the system goes through its next set of questions. And the next thing it's focusing on is the histology. So what's her grade? What's her ERPR and her two status? There's no mention of her KI67. So there's no data over there. And then with that, pretty much it's asked its five or six questions that it needs to know for a treatment naive triple negative breast cancer patient with multiple meds. And then this piece of the input is done. And so what the analyst is able to do is then to generate and run it against the guidelines. And at this point, what it'll do is match the patient with the guidelines and then with the TMH experience, the NCG doctor's experience who are on the panel who has been responding and tries to pull in and see, is it a non-complex case or a complex case? If it's a non-complex case, it'll come back with an answer. If it's a complex case, it'll route it back through to the doctors on the expert app, as some of you might already be aware. We have a mobile expert app where we send case consultations to the TMH and the NCG doctors. So on site, this takes about a minute or two where this is running, but the benefit of it is it's giving the doctors the summary and the guidelines output in very sort of far away remote areas. We're talking about like 200, 300 kilometers away from Vishakhapatnam, 200 kilometers away from Dibrugar, et cetera. And with more and more NLP, we're able to automate this so that just when you upload the report, this comes out right away. You don't even have to do this verification process. So if I open the report and, you, and we look at it, what this does is it's it's saying that such and such, this is the assessment on the decision tree for a 74-year-old woman, stage four breast cancer, triple negative, et cetera, mapping it out to the guidelines that we have seen and the most common regimens we have seen on the expert app. And then it comes out with a recommendation over there. She also has bone mats, so it's adding something over there as well. Gives the doctor essentially the, the standard tests that need to be checked. And then also at the bottom of it, all the input criteria. So some of you may be familiar with our structured summaries that come out. Here's the clinical context of the patient. What was fed in? What's the TNM stage? You know, what was a hormonal stage, et cetera. And so the summary is also provided to the oncologist or the doctor. So they know what the input criteria was in case there was any errors. So what's the utility of a solution like this? In a few minutes, if you are able to actually go ahead and produce this, the utility of that solution is that we are able to essentially take this and start impacting patient care in a real way. So I'm going to give you just a few examples of what we are doing so you can see how we use a technology like this. So we've been working with India Cancer Society, 75-year-old organization, which is very well known across India. We have a four-year partnership with India Cancer Society, where initially they tested out our solution. They were reviewing every application for coverage of cancer treatment by hand, where it would go to a panel of doctors and be reviewed to say whether this treatment was a standard of care or not. Through the use of our system with a collaboration with Tata Memorial Center, Navya, and India Cancer Society, we initially ran a pilot where we showed for non-complex patients. We were pretty much 99% uh, in agreement. And 
Now we've started processing about 70% of the cases through the engine alone, which has really cut out the due diligence team's time. So only the complex cases are being reviewed by the due diligence team. We've presented this data at SIOP, at UICC, at multiple conferences. In fact, we were just at ICC a couple of months ago uh, for that as well. Number two, we're actually taking it out of India Cancer Society, out of the nonprofits, and going to the state hospitals directly. So we're working in Andhra Pradesh with uh, Dr. Umesh Mahan Shetty, who's the leader of the state NCG over there, and is also the state NCG chapter, and the Homi Baba Vishakapatnam. And in a hub and spoke model with five cancer centers, we're showing that the deployment of a technology assisted solution like this can start helping in the spokes. Early results, we've only been there for four weeks right now, but very early results, what we are finding it at the Apex Center for a validation, we are very concordant on non uh, complex cases. So, reproving ourselves at every site. And then in the spoke centers where they don't have a surgeon or they don't have a radiation oncologist or they don't have a medical oncologist who specializes in their disease, we're able to provide that multidisciplinary opinion through the technological platform. Time to treatment in the spoke centers is going down to where they would have to wait a week to go to the hub center. We are able to get them the answer in the spoke center within 24 hours. So some pretty good early data that we are seeing. If any of you have visited Assam, you know it's a very remote area. A lot of travel it takes us three days to get from Guwahati to Debrugar. We are stationed in Debrugar in Assam Cancer Care Foundation, where through the they they hardly are able to recruit. Uh, senior oncologists to go and live over there, even though the facilities are fantastic, infrastructure is good, but recruiting is a challenge. We've been able to basically increase the physician bandwidth for every two patients they used to see, they're able to see three through the use of the technology because we're doing a lot of the checks. And about 10 to 15 cases are coming for complex case reviews as well. And then finally, this is the last slide, about 900 patient experience in Tamil Nadu. The result I'm most proud of is that we were able to reduce patient visits from three and a half average visits before starting treatments down to two visits. So what used to take them six weeks of come, get a test, go back, come, get a test, go back. We were able to reduce it down to two weeks through the use of this technology. So, I mean, this is all your work. You guys are generating the evidence. You guys are setting the standard of care. And what we're trying to do is Im embed it inside a technology platform so that you know, further and further away without specialist access, they can at least know for the non-complex cases what to do, what to do next. Um, and with this method, what we are hoping to do is prove that in the remote case, we showed that there was in this 30% of patients in blue who are not mapping to standard treatment guidelines through like a service like TMC, uh, the NCG Navia service, we were able to flip about 50% into concordant treatment with the standard treatment guidelines, whether that's response assessment, follow-up assessment, uh, you know, diagnostic tests. And we're trying to do this on site with the hospitals as well in multiple states. Uh, and uh, so the AI in medical technology is not just for the imaging side. We're also trying to bring it into text. I know radiologists have always been at the forefront of uh, AI in, in medicine, but uh, also in the realm of text, there's a lot we can do by mapping to treatment guidelines, mapping to expert opinions and expanding your expertise. So thank you for listening patiently.